It's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com. And one of our questions that came in today, I'm gonna make a live video, yay, because I need to do a demo. So the question is, how do I put my patient in CR or how do I know that my patient doesn't have a CRCO shift so that I can set up the ortho properly or make sure my patient is done? And what type of patient should I do this on? So let's talk about the why behind that and then what type of patients and then I'll show you the demo. So the why behind it is sometimes when there's an interference, a patient's gonna have a shift. So in a patient that maybe has an edge to edge bite, they might shift forward and it might look like an underbite, but it's really not actually. It might just be an edge to edge bite with a shift. So it might look worse than it actually is. So this is actually a good thing. Um, in a patient that was class two, had overjet and a small lower jaw, and maybe you're doing some functional appliance therapy, be it Invisalign with MA, twin block, bionator, um, some other type of fixed functional appliance, um, Sometimes they get muscle memory and they just, or even just elastics, it happens too. Sometimes they get muscle memory and sometimes they just naturally slide forward and it's really hard to catch those, especially if you have a patient that maybe you've been doing one of these, like a lot of elastics and all of a sudden you see like a dramatic correction or maybe you haven't seen them in a while and it looks like it's corrected and you're like, wow, good job. You did such a good job with your appliance and actually they didn't do anything. Um, I've also had patients that are class two that had appliances and they're so smart that they figured out if they slide forward, you're gonna end the treatment and take the appliance away and maybe put the braces on. It's happened many times where they've cheated the system. Really good little liars. So um, maybe they do it intentionally, maybe they don't, I don't know. Um, so the problem is if you don't get this right, one of two things can happen. For the class three patients, you might overtreat. You might say you need jaw surgery. You might say you need to pull out a lower tooth or two lower teeth. You might pull out four teeth when you didn't need to. Maybe you just needed some lower IPR. So you make the, you think the case is worse than it is and you overtreat, which causes major damage. And now you're in big trouble later, okay? And that's on you for not diagnosing correctly. It is not on the patient for biting wrong, okay? You should have known. Um, the other thing is you need to make sure in the class three patients, if you're taking a Ceph X-ray, which I hope you are on every single class three patient, that you're taking the Ceph X-ray in CR, not in CO, which can be tricky, especially if you're outsourcing the Ceph. Your Ceph has to match the CR, okay? It doesn't match the CO because we've got to get numbers off the CR, okay? Okay, so that's for class three. For class two, it's a little more innocuous. Worst comes to worst. Um, you know, if they have a Sunday bite and they slide forward, whether they did it intentionally or <laughs> manipulatively, um, that you think they're done. And then a few weeks to a month later, you're like, what, where'd this class two come from? Our, it was corrected. Class two doesn't relapse. It only relapses when that wasn't really corrected, okay? So then you just get to fix it again. So it's not as bad, except for it can really make parents upset when you told them treatment was done and it's not. And I've seen this happening probably at least once a month with different doctors that show me cases. My class two came back. I said, class twos can't come back. Sorry, impossible. So class threes can come back. They can get worse if you grow some more. So anyways, those are the two different scenarios where I want you to do it. Okay, now um, let's talk a little bit more about, yes, yeah, so we talked about shifts. So shifts are for class three, premature shift and slide. Often you'll see asymmetry, asymmetry in the jaw, asymmetry in the midline, doesn't, you don't always, but it often comes with that, okay? For the class twos, sometimes you see nothing. You usually don't see any asymmetry. It looks perfectly perfect. You're celebrating they did a great job and nothing actually was done. Um, so that is, either way it's bad. Okay, so let's talk about how to do this. Now, if it's a little kiddo, you know, like a six, seven, eight, they're not gonna be able to follow these instructions. You're just gonna have to, Relax your jaw, make your jaw feel like jello, and then you just kind of have to guide it into place. You know, I'm gonna close the jaw for you, and it's really kind of tricky, okay? Also, sometimes, some, or, or you can, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, okay. But for an older patient, you can try this, okay? So this is actually a great tool, it's called Myospots. Um, unfortunately with myospots and you use them for myofunctional therapy, these are left over from my myofunctional therapy. They're really expensive and they literally are xylitol lozenges that take forever to melt. But when you stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth, it glues it, like glues it. You try to rip it off before it melts, it will take the skin off your tongue. So <laughs> once I end this demo, I'm not gonna be able to talk anymore comfortably. So I'm gonna end it because I don't wanna rip the tongue off, rip the, rip the skin off my tongue. So you need to let the patient know that. You need to let it melt. Um, it's not too comfortable. So I'm gonna say as much as I can and then I'm gonna do the demo. So basically you're gonna put the myo spot. Um, it's better to go ahead and press it to the spot you want on the roof of your mouth. So 
You, I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. As far back as possible so they don't gag, okay? So you're gonna take your finger, you're gonna press it back there, and then you're gonna hold it there for a few seconds, and then you're gonna tell them to take the tip of their tongue and put it on that spot. Now you better make sure that they can put their tip of the tongue that far back first. So see how far back they can go? Maybe mark it with like um, one of those little like intraoral pens, you know, those little like little blue sticks that we use for dentures so you can mark the spot. That might be a good idea. That way you know that their tongue can go that far back. So that means super accurate here, okay? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tell them to put their tongue back there, okay? So you can say hold it for 10 seconds, but I find that when you do that, it, a lot of times it slides. So if you use the myo spot, then it won't slide because it's glued. <laughs> so, and then you're gonna tell them to close their jaws and not their teeth together. So you're gonna kind of explain that your teeth may not touch, but I want your jaws to close down until you feel something touch. Doesn't have to be all the way down. And once you feel something touch and feel like you can't close anymore, stop and stay there. And I'm gonna check your bite and take some pictures, okay? And let them know I want your tongue to keep staying where it is this whole process until I say you're done. Then you can go ahead and let this, and by the way, these comes in tons of flavors, these uh, myo spots. I want you to wait till it melts, you know, or till you can comfortably release it. Don't try to yank it off or you're gonna rip the skin either off the roof of your mouth or off your tongue. It might, I mean, these are meant to last like 30 minutes, but you can, you usually release it pretty easily in five to 10 minutes. So they're gonna be like this for a while. Um, they come in lots of flavors. Last I checked, you cannot order them from Amazon or any other dental distributor. They have to be or ordered directly from this company. And I don't even know who makes my spots. Um, they're vegan, by the way, too. That's awesome. Literally, I believe this was something, Myo Spots Australia. I think I had to ship them from Australia. And I think it was cheaper to ship them to the mainland than it was to where I am in Hawaii, if I remember correctly. It was like, I swear this was like 50 bucks. And I was like, I know this costs like five cents to make. This is annoying. Um, but there's a lot in here. So you can use them for a lot of cool things and also for Myo training. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the demo. Now I don't have a CRCO shift, so my bite's gonna look exactly the same. But in somebody that is class three, sometimes you're surprised, woo. It's totally different. Someone that is class two, woo, sometimes it's totally different, right? And the less you tell the patient, sometimes the better. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and do the demo. Let's get started.